Hi, this is Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And before we get into today's show, I'd like to give a warning that we will be discussing what can be considered to be adult material here today. So if you have young children, you might want to make sure that you supervise the, their listening to this show or to maybe lead them to another room or to listen to this show if, uh, by a podcast. So just remember that we'll be discussing uh, what's wrong with porn and there are some terminologies that will be used that some listeners might fe- find offensive or might think it's not suitable for their younger ones. Helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Certified Christian Counselor and Director of Ottawa's Elam Counseling Services. Hi, this is Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services. And I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of the Life Transformation Radio Show. It's a radio show where chains are broken and the lives are transformed. If you're not familiar with Elam Counseling Services, uh, we're a Christian counseling ministry that offers professional counseling from a biblical perspective, and we are located in Ottawa. We have uh, two locations in Ottawa, and uh, we have been serving this region now for for quite some time. Uh, if you're not if you're not familiar with how to get in touch with us, you can contact us by phone at 613-699-1677. And again, it's 613-699-1677. You can find out more about us on our website and you can also access tons of useful information at our website at elimcounselingministry.com. And as usual, we have another interesting show lined up for you today. And But before I go into that, I have to introduce my co-host, <laughs> Melissa Waga. Thank you for being with us again on this show, Melissa. It's so great to be back with you, Michael. It's always so fun to delve into these topics with you and, and learn some more about uh, myself as we talk about these topics. Absolutely. And and today we are, we are talking about a topic that we have addressed before. And we want to address this topic uh, a second time because there is some new research that I've come across since we have done the first show. And the topic that we are discussing today is pornography. And we wanted to... In- we wanted to title this show today, uh, What's Wrong with Pornography? What's Wrong with Pornography? For, for, so, so keep your dial set to this station because you'll be learning a lot of interesting things about pornography and a lot of uh, information that will answer the debate that has been going around pornography. And so it's interesting that we've titled it this show, What's Wrong with Pornography? Because I, I can... I'm trying to picture myself inside some of our listeners' heads. Maybe the first thing they thought when you said, what's wrong with pornography? The answer that comes up is nothing. Nothing's wrong with porn. Mm -hmm. And in the last show, um, we talked about some defense mechanisms that people come up with to sort of justify pornography. And I was wondering if you could explain sort of some typical things you may have heard when people try to make it seem that pornography is okay. Well, people will say such thing as, you're not hurting anyone. Uh, it's not like you're having an affair. This is something you're doing in the privacy of, of your home. So what could be wrong with that? It's just a harmless. You're looking at a computer screen. You're not doing anything, quote unquote, illegal. So it's it's OK. Uh, some clients have or not some clients, but some people have sort of labeled Christians as the kind of holier than thou uh, people who see everything that has to do with nudity as sin. And so they have sort of said it's just Christians who... We're big prudes. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. It's just Christians who are speaking out against pornography. Uh, but today we want to look at uh, some interesting information that will put a lot of uh, a lot of these notions to rest. And and one of the ones I've heard often is sex is natural and it's mm-hmm. created by God. And we've actually done shows about that mm-hmm. where we've talked about the God design for sex and how God in in the right circumstances want us to engage in that and enjoy it and all those things. Mm-hmm. So how do you address the argument when someone says porn is sex? Sex was created by God. So it must be okay, right? Yes, that's a very common argument. And uh, the, the, the notion, as you have outlined it, the argument, as you have 
outlined it is quite correct. People say sex is invented by God. It, it's God who, who created sex and that porn is not uh, showing anything that people haven't done for thousands of years. So why is it wrong if if sex isn't wrong? What's wrong with, with, with viewing sex? So let me say that pornography is not sex. The indulgence in pornography is not sex. Uh, what is involved in pornography, as I will outline a number of things, is quite the opposite of what takes place in most sexual encounters. Uh, a lot of the, the pornography videos that are out there, studies that have been, been done on these videos, show that there is very little uh, contacts made by hand, very little embracing, very little caressing or touching that is normally done in, in sexual sexual encounters between a loving husband and a wife. It, it's all about uh, uh, penetration in, in a lot of these videos and the, the guy's sperm rituals where ladies are, you know, made to do things that your average woman would not do in the normal sexual encounter. So for that first First part of it, I, I think it, it's a deviation from what the normal sexual encounter is about. Uh, another thing about pornography that makes it different than sex is that uh, pornography is is involves a lot of aloneness, being alone. Guys who are addicted to pornography, they spend a lot of time alone with a computer screen. That is not sex. Sex was meant to involve two persons in, in, in God's God's creation of what sex was in, in, created to be. It was supposed to be God created Adam and Eve. It was supposed to be uh, two persons. So uh, sex, sex involved being on... Pornography involves being on Online. Uh, this is not involved in normal sexual encounters. It involves a lot of novelty. And this is one of the, the, the reasons that, one of the factors that leads to addiction because of this novelty. Just at the click of a button, uh, the people who are involved in pornography, they're having a new partner every time that they go online. They are fantasizing with a new partner every time that they go online. That's actually a, a unique way to think of it. I never thought of it that way where it's it really is that new partner every time. It's not like you go out on a Friday night and you meet someone like you could have hundreds of partners in a day when you think of it in that regard. Absolutely. And so you can see how that adrenaline and that new relationship each time would be really attractive and, and addicting. Right, and, and, and that's a problem because our brain wasn't created by God to to function at that level, but that to, to, to deal with that flood of dopamine that is constantly being bombarded in the guise of, of in the brains of these guys who are on pornography. So the novelty, they have done experiment that shows the 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 spike in dopamine uh, from guys who are viewing uh, who, who view a new porn porn video? So what they would do, they would have this group of men, and they would they would show them the same the same videos for a while, these text test subjects. And then what you would find is that each time that they view the old video, there would be a decrease in the flood of dopamine to their brain. And then once a new video is introduced, there is a spike, a tremendous spike in the level of dopamine that it goes back to the original high level that at the first time that they viewed the, the, the old video. So what is happening is that these men are they are, are seeing uh, they, they are clicking new sites new images every time that they go online and their brain has been flooded over and over and over again with very high dosage of of dopamines. So even in, in, in the animal kingdom, what we find is that uh, for animals, for example, they are protected against this. There is mating season when there is a, there is there, the, the males of the species will go all out in terms of sexual activities. But then mother nature, uh, as God created it, gives those, uh, those male animals a break. They, they don't keep going. Can you imagine these animals of mating season was all year 
Yeah, you, they'd have nothing else to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they'd probably work themselves to death from exhaustion, Absolutely. I would think. Absolutely. And this is what is happening with guys who view pornography, that they're actually wearing themselves out because there's this constant flood of dopamine. And so what is happening is that they're, 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 they, they're developing things like ADHD. They, they can't focus. They can't function at work. And the life in, in other areas just becomes a bore and a dull to them because uh, all they can think of is the next time that they're going to be online. So there's a lot of mental health issues that the studies show are being developed by guys who are addicted. Or I shouldn't say guys because they're also women now. But yeah, no, that, that was going to actually be to, one of my people questions. People who are addicted to pornography. Is, is how, how common is it to be seen in women? Because we always think sort of the stereotypical young guy locked in his room with the computer on. Mm -hmm. But is this an issue that also affects women? Absolutely. I don't have any stats to show exactly what percentage of women are viewing porn. But what I do know from the research that I have done and from, from the studies that I have seen, that there is an increasing amount of women who are becoming addicted to pornography as well. And what is, what is behind in this, what is driving this, is the indulgence in chat rooms and in uh, Skype-type activities where girls are sending images of themselves to guys and then it it goes from there to 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 viewing of of pornography mm. and so in the kingdom life seminars that you often host you've had these discussions about pornography and one of the things you bring up in there is about how porn addicts have a hard time in actual relationships so when you take them away from their computer screens mm -hmm. and the the porn videos or images they have issues when they're interacting with someone in quote-unquote real life why does this happen well, I talked about before what is involved in pornography where there is this aloneness, there is this being online. So you take your average uh, male, that st statistics tells us, studies tell us that these, these males are exposed to porn from 10 years old. So you have someone who is, who is introduced to porn at 12 while their brain is still developing where, where they're while they're still developing a notion of what sexuality is all about, and they are bombarded with these images uh, of of pornography. They're 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 connecting sex with being alone. They're connecting sex with searching online, having multiple tabs open. They're connecting sex with novelty, a new partner, and a new image each time. You put these men into relationship, into a monogamous relationship with one person, and that's not attractive. Their brain doesn't function function the, the way that it was meant to f function because real sex in contrast to pornography involves courtship, it involves being touched, it involves smells, it involves connectedness. And and so these men are, are brain are conditioned to, to things that doesn't involve any of these things. It involves the clicking of the clicking of a mouse, it involves a computer screen, it involves uh, it, it it involves being being uh, around a computer as I've said before and being alone. So these things uh, are quite quite opposite than what is involved in each sex. So you put these men in relationship and many of them are having difficulties. They, they don't find it exciting. They, they leave their partners in bed uh, to go downstairs or to, 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 to hide and to view pornography, images of porn on their laptop or on their cell phone because that is what their minds have been condition to view as exciting. I also think too with some of the acts that are shown in those videos when you get into a more traditional type of relationship when you're involving in that consent and what what works for me and what works for you. Absolutely. If they've been habituated to think this is how sex is and someone says no that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't jive as you say with that um, normalcy that's been built up in their mind as to what sex is. No, because they have their own notion from what they have seen in the videos as to what a woman would like and what what sex is supposed to be like. And exactly. You take that what they you, they see in those images and you bring that into a normal relationship and women are going that doesn't work for me. That mm -hmm. is not exciting. And a lot of these guys just don't know what to do because they their version of what sex is is from what they see in the porn video videos. If 
if you've just joined us, you are listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show. I'm your host, Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And with me in studio today is Melissa Wagat, our co-host. And if you're not familiar with Elim Counseling Services, you can find out more about us by visiting our website at elimcounselingministry.com. You can also contact us by phone at 613-699-1677. And again, I want to thank you so much for joining us in this interesting topic. We are discussing the topic, What's Wrong with Pornography? And if you have missed the first part of this broadcast, uh, uh, you can f- you can listen to it by going to our website and listening to the podcast that will be available later on in the week. So one of the things you've highlighted in the new research that you've done is the fact that there's actually a huge cohort of young men that are starting to speak out against porn. And they've been addicts themselves, they've been involved in this lifestyle, and they're starting to come forward and saying, look, this isn't for me anymore, and they're quitting. Mm-hmm. Why do you think this is happening? Well, let, let me say, first of all, that these men who are, there's a, a huge movement online, and these are not Christian Christian men. These are men from all walks of life, especially young men who are saying, I want nothing more, former porn, uh, pornography addict, addicts who are now saying, it's not working for me. I want nothing to do with it. And the reason this is happening, uh, what that's driving this is that many of these men have started to experience erectile dysfunction. I see a lot of these men uh, that come to my practice where they have been to the doctors and the doctors will say to them, you're, 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 it's not, there's nothing physiologically wrong with you. Your, your body is okay. It's in your head. It's so your brain has been wired. And so these men have viewed porn so often, and as I talked before about this constant flood of dopamine that they are constantly being bombarded with, they eventually develop uh, in addiction circles what is known as habituation, where it takes more and more of the same stimuli to bring about that that high. Eventually what happens with these men after a while is that they they they, they start finding it harder and they, there's a drop in libido, then they start finding it harder and harder to have an erection and then eventually uh, they, they, they can't have an erection. So these men are now uh, flooding therapist half offices uh, being sent there by their doctors because uh, Viagra doesn't work for these men in the same way that uh, it, similar medication doesn't work for women uh, because for women the sex is more about what's going on in, in the mind. So for a lot of these men, they're having a problem and they're saying, porn has wrecked my sex life. I can't have an erection anymore. And so now they're seeking help. The good news is that uh, it's treatable and that for a lot of these men we find after a few months of therapies, therapy, they're able to start having their their erections again. Now, what what I find interesting in in one of the studies that that have been done, and before I get into that, I would just like to to read talk about a study that has been done by the Italian Society of Andrology and Sexual Medicine, where this study involved 28,000 Italian men. So we're talking about a very big study here, 28,000 men. And uh, what, what is said in this study is that uh, porn, the porn leads to a, a gradual loss of the ability to have an erection. And the, the, the head of the study, Carlos Foster, so said that it starts with low reactions to porn sites, then there is a, gradu- a general drop in libido, and in the end, it becomes impossible to get an erection. So you're talking about 28,000 men that have been studied in this, in this study, and it is showing that it follows this pattern. Now, what is, what is interesting about, about this study is that they're finding that it is harder for younger men to regain their ability to have an erection than for older men who are in their 50s and 60s. I'm just thinking the how mentally the mental anguish of that for a young man Mm -hmm. who's supposed to be virile and young and fit and something like getting an erection is impossible by and it's directly caused by something that was seemingly harmless 
Absolutely. And so it makes me think for people before they get involved or if you're a parent of a young child, how do you stop this cycle from getting started? And then maybe later we can talk about if you have gotten in this cycle and you maybe have this addiction and maybe you're starting to experience some of these physical Mm -hmm. consequences, Mm -hmm. how you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, as parents, I think we have to be very vigilant in our homes because around 10 uh, years old or uh, early teens, boys are, and uh, children in general begin to develop an interest in in sex. That's just how we are wired by God. So if there is not uh, guidelines put in place to, to make the viewing of porn on pornography on the home computers difficult, then it's quite natural that young people will gravitate towards looking at these sites just out of curiosity. And then I think from there, what eventually happens is that because of the high that they experience, they keep going back and back. And and, and so it, it eventually becomes addicted. We have had in our practice even young girls as young as 10 and 11 years old who have discovered pornography and are finding it finding it very difficult to to break the habit. And I have also seen uh, all the women who have come in who said that I started viewing porn in, uh, in at age 10, 11, and since then I, I, I haven't stopped. So it becomes a problem, and I think it's for us as parents to be very vigilant and to make sure that we put the protect, protective mechanisms in place, such as filters on our computers and software, that will make it difficult for them to view pornography. And I think the other piece there you, you mentioned is having those conversations with your kids. And we've mm-hmm. talked about this in some of our previous shows where you're starting to model healthy sexual behavior mm-hmm. for them at a young age. And so that they're not doing these things in the secret dark corners, but they know they can go to you as a parent and say, look, I came across this or my friend's looking at this. Mm-hmm. What do we as a family think about this? Right. Absolutely. Having having those conversations, I think, is very, very important because the devastation that pornography has in the minds of young people is now come into light. Uh, Studies, as I talked about before, are showing that it's more difficult for for younger men to to regain the ability to have an erection than for older men who have viewed porn. And and what what is behind this is that when uh, a a person starts viewing porn in their teenage years, it's happening at a time when the, the the do- dopamine is at the peak and when the neuroplasticity of, of their brain is is also very susceptible to to inputs so if you if you take that average young person and you start flooding that young person's mind with pornography while the brain is still developing in the teenage years and even early 20s up until around age 22 what is happening that that brain become uh, almost fixed with the with the with the notion that pornog- sex is is all about pornography and so uh, these men is also uh, these young younger people are also more prone to addiction so it become addictive and the brain where the brain goes pornography is what sex is about so these younger men when they lose their ability to have an erection it's harder for them to to get over that whereas older men what the studies are showing that these older men in their 50s uh, can regain their their ability to have an erection lot a lot sooner and why because they a lot these older men did not have the the access to to porn videos in their teens the way it is available to, to younger men now. we They had those magazines. Yeah, you had to get the Playboy that came in the brown paper package Absolutely. that you hid under your mattress. Yes, and so there wasn't this endless novelty because you'd have those, that one magazine for, for years and it, it, there wouldn't be this constant click and you get a, a new magazine, so to speak. These men d- did not have the same flood of dopamine that made them susceptible to addiction the way that your the teenagers do now. So so these older men uh, are regaining their ability to, to, to have an erection about, about two and a half times faster than it, it takes for the younger men who started viewing porn in their in their teenagers. And I think that's a really good 
understanding to have for context of sort of what the younger people are facing now that it is a different world and the things they're viewing and the things they're seeing are different than in the past. So if you're dealing with a young person, today's porn is different than your generation's porn and the effects are different just because of access. Mm -hmm. So it always, we always get to this point of the show where it's the, the, the what next factor. So if you're someone out there who may be experiencing this, or you have someone in your life who's maybe going through this and maybe you haven't had the physical signs yet with erectile dysfunction, but you definitely know you have a problem. What steps should these people start taking today? Well, let me say that when you're dealing with addiction, it's not an easy fix because your your brain is wired to go after whatever it is that you're addicted to. So for people who are any kind of addicts, addict, I think there is professional help that is needed. Uh, you may have been listening to this show and you're thinking, I have tried to stop several times and I have just not been able to. That's the difficulty with, with addiction. You need professional help. You need uh, guidance, professional guidance and support from those around you to be able to quit this habit. So what I would say, first of all, is that if, if you have been struggling and it's getting to a point where it's affecting your relationship, it's affecting your ability to function in your, in your relationship, with your spouse, get professional help. As I've said before, the studies show that the conditions can be reversed in the same in the same way that the brain can be wired to view pornography as sex. It can be rewired. And thanks to the plasticity of the brain, we know that the, 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 the damage can be undone. But it will take time and it will take, the, it will take treatment at the hands of a professional who understand how to deal with pornography addiction. So I would say the first thing that you need to do is to get help. The, the second thing that I think is, is, is very important is for you to begin to speak out to those around you that you can't do this on your own and that you, you need help to be able to quit. And I think there, there are softwares that can be be used as a part of the the process uh, uh, passwords that can be put on computer you can give over your devices that you at certain times of the day such as late night when you know you're more prone to to view in pornography as a way of making sure that you have less access to this but i i think you you will need to have a supporting cast and i think also there are groups such as uh uh the the sex anonymous groups and and uh, groups like that that can be very helpful in helping someone who, with, a, with with which is in part in that large part of sex addiction to get over this this problem so unfortunately we have come to the end of today's broadcast and melissa i want to thank you for being with us again today and for helping us to look into this topic in such a detailed way thanks again for those wonderful questions and i want to thank you listeners out there who have joined us uh today you may have been listening to the show for the first time thank you very much for joining us and please remember that we are on the air every monday morning at 9 30 a.m and that you can also view the podcast on our website at elim counselingministry.com uh, You can also reach us by phone at 613-699-1677 This topic may have touched you and you realize your need of help. Give us a call and we'll be happy to, 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 to help you get over this problem. Until next time, this is your host Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services and Melissa Waggett thanking you very much for joining us in today's edition of the Life Transformation Radio Show and praying that God would bless you in all your relationships and to keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. Mm-hmm.